The Bible says, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn and live. That's what God wants from you. He wants you to turn, turn from sin and live. That's what God wants from you. Have you repented of your sin? and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was crucified on a cross for you. Jesus died on the cross for you. The Bible says that the death that Jesus died, He died to sin once, but the life that He lives, He lives to God. Likewise, you also consider yourself to be dead to sin and alive through Christ Jesus our Lord. It says, Do not present yourselves as slaves to sin, but present yourselves as slaves to righteousness. So, have you died with Christ? Have you been resurrected with Christ? Have you put to death the sin in your life? That's what it takes to be with Jesus. That you repent, that you turn from sin and follow Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died for you, rose from the dead for you, that He might bring you to God. The question is, are you living in sin today? Are you committing sin today? If so, you need to repent, turn away from sin, give up your sin, be free from sin through the cross. You know, a lot of churches today do not preach the true gospel of Jesus. They preach a false gospel. You know, the the Catholic Church says that, that Mary was a co-mediatrix with Christ. And the Protestants say that it's faith alone. They're both wrong. They're both wrong. You know, don't become a Protestant or a Catholic. Become a follower of Jesus. Become a Christian. <laughs> you know, Jesus calls us to repent. To repent. Have you repented of your sin? Or are you just following the fake gospel of churches? Have you turned from your sin? Or are you just being a hypocrite Christian? Lots of people, lots of people just go to church, call themselves Christians, but they don't actually obey Jesus. They don't actually obey the New Testament. Is that you? You know, the Bible says, do not be deceived. He who does what is right is righteous just as he is righteous. The Bible says, he who sins is of the devil. Whoever commits sin is of the devil, the Bible says. He who does what is good is of God. But he who does what is evil has not seen God, the Bible says. So the question is, are you committing sin today or not? If you're committing sin today, you need to turn from sin. You need to give up sin in order to be forgiven. You need to stop sinning in order to be forgiven by Jesus. That's the truth. Jesus said, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you.
it's better that one of your hands should perish than your whole body to be cast into hell. You know, hell's real. Hell's real. And people are going to find out that hell is real one day. You know, don't go there. Don't go there. Turn from sin. Stop your sin. Give up your sin and follow Jesus Christ. Repent of your sin. Turn from sin and obey Jesus. Obey Jesus. You know, I want people to be set free. I want people to turn from sin. I want people to be let loose from the bondage that they're in. You know, sin is slavery. Sin is bondage. And if you're committing sin today, the Bible says that you're a slave to sin. A slave to your sin. Oh, but I want you to be set free through Christ. You know, the Bible says, whoever the Son sets free is free indeed. Free indeed. You can be set free from sin. That's true. You can be a uh, made righteous through the blood of Jesus, but you need to repent. You need to repent. There are conditions to being forgiven. There are conditions for salvation, and it's that you repent. Jesus said, unless you repent, you will perish. You know, there are certain conditions uh, in order to be forgiven by Jesus. One of them is that we repent. That means to turn from our sins. Turn from our sins. That's, that's a requirement. Uh, another requirement is that we forgive others. Jesus said, unless you forgive others, you yourselves will not be forgiven. You know, everyone is not just forgiven because they go to church. You know, everyone is not just forgiven because they go to confirmation. You need to meet certain requirements. You need to repent. You need to forgive others. You need to walk in paths of righteousness, the Bible says. You know, lots of people think that they are Christians when indeed they are not because they're obeying sin. Is that you? Are you living a life of sin and at the same time profess Jesus' name? If you're living in sin today, the Bible says you're of the devil. You're of the devil. If you're living in sin today, you're of the devil, the Bible says. So the question is, have you repented of all your sin? Have you given up all your sin? And are you obeying the Lord Jesus? The Bible says that those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So if you're truly one of Jesus's, that means that you'll put to death the sin in your life. You'll give it up. Anytime you're tempted, you can say, no, no, I don't want to sin. The Bible says that the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from temptations. And he knows how to pre preserve, he knows how to preserve the unjust under judgment for the day of judgment. You know, so you can, you can resist temptation. You got to resist all temptation in order to be in the kingdom. You got to stop your sin. That's what I'm saying. You know, the beginning of sin is temptation. The devil's going to try to tempt you, tempt you. And you need to say, no, devil. I don't want to sin. I'm not going to sin. That's what you need to do. Resist temptation. The Bible says, resist temptation. It says, blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which God will give to those who love him. You need to resist temptation before you receive the crown of life. You need to go and sin no more, the Bible says. Jesus said, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. It's better that one of your hands should perish than your whole body to be cast into hell. Where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Lots of people don't like to talk about hell these days. Lots of people don't like to mention the 
the word hell, the concept of hell. But there is a hell. Hell for the ungodly. Hell for the sinners. That's true. That's true. So are you a sinner today? Or are you an ex-sinner? That's what you need to ask yourself. Are you a sinner today? Or are you an ex-sinner? Sinners will be cast into hell whether they believe in Jesus or not. People who commit sin will be thrown into hell, the Bible says. How are you living life today? Are you living for sin or are you living for Jesus? There's only two paths. The broad path, which leads to destruction, and the narrow way, which leads to life. Jesus said many people, many, are on the way that leads to destruction or on the broad road. But he said, the narrow and difficult is the way that leads to life and few there be that find it. Few people, few people are on the way that leads to life. Many people are on the way that leads to destruction, the Bible says. Which are you? Which are you? Are you on the way that leads to destruction? Or are you on the way that leads to life? If you're committing sin today, you're on the way that leads to destruction. If you're living a life of partying and uh, looking at nasty things on the internet, you're on your way to the way of destruction. You're on the broad path. Yeah, but it's going to be a hell of a party. No, it won't. It'll be fire. The, the party's canceled. I'm saying it's going to be fire, man. The party's been canceled. The party's been canceled due to the fire. There's no party in hell. No party in hell. There's no party in hell. There's only fire. It's hard to have a party when there's only fire. You know, al alcohol's flammable. You know that? There's not going to be a party in hell. Not going to be a party in hell. Don't go to hell. Repent of your sin. No, we're not. There's no fire. No, there's no hell here. I tell you, there's flames in hell. No water in hell. There's water here. You know, you got drinking fountains and faucets. There's a lemonade stands up and down this street, probably. This is not hell. This is uh, St. Louis. This is St. Louis. This is St. Charles. St. Charles. But there's a lot of people in St. Charles that aren't living as saints. They're sinners. There's a lot of sinners in St. Charles. We should call it Sinner Charles. We should call St. Charles Sinner Charles because there's so many sinners here. Turn from your sin, give up your sin, and turn to Jesus. Jesus called it repent, repent. The R word, the R word, repent, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Apostle Paul said, do works, do works that prove you've repented. Do works that prove you've turned from your sin. Prove it by your deeds. Turn from all your sin, give up all your sin, and follow and obey Jesus. This is the only way to be forgiven, to be set free, is, is that you repent and are baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Turn from your sin and dedicate your life to Jesus, obeying Jesus. The Bible says that on Judgment Day, many people will say, Lord, Lord, did we not do many wonderful works in your name and cast out demons in your name? And Jesus will pronounce to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of sin, you workers of lawlessness. Lots of people go to church. They say they believe in Jesus, but they don't obey. Is that you? Is that you? Are you a sinner today? Are you committing sin today? If so, you need to repent. Repent and be converted that your sins might be blotted out. Hi, buddy. Follow Jesus. Obey your parents.
Turn from sin. Turn from sin. Follow Jesus. That's my message today. Stop sinning. Follow Jesus. A lot of people, a lot of people ask for a sign from God. They say, God, show me a sign. Here's your sign today. St. Charles, here's your sign from God today. Right here. Here's your sign from God today. You want a sign for God? Here it is. Here's your sign. Turn from sin. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Jesus Christ wants to cleanse you. You know, the Bible says that Jesus came to purge our sins. That means clean our lives from sin so that you wouldn't do it. That's why Jesus came. He came to cleanse you so that you wouldn't sin anymore. That's the whole point of Jesus. That's the whole point. To teach you how to walk. Now, if you're walking in sin, you're not walking with Jesus. I'm going to repeat myself one more time. If you're walking in sin, you're not walking with Jesus. So turn from sin, stop sinning, and follow Jesus. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Jesus said, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Right? So we need to turn from sin in order to be forgiven by Jesus. You know, a lot of people say faith alone. It's not faith alone. You know, James said faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. If you're a sinner today, you're dead. Dead in sin. Are you committing sin today? If so, you're dead. I don't care what church you go to. I don't care if you're a Catholic or a Baptist or a Calvinist or whatever you are. If you're living in sin today, you're not a Christian. You haven't been forgiven. If you're committing sin today, you're not a Christian. Haven't been forgiven. So, turn from sin today and follow Jesus. You know, if you're, a, if you're a sinner today, the Bible says God doesn't even hear your prayer. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and His ears are open to their prayer. But the faith of the Lord is against those who do evil, the Bible says. So God doesn't hear the prayers of sinners. God does not hear the prayers of sinners. Are you a sinner today? Or have you repented of your sin? Have you given up your sin? Luke 13, 3. Luke chapter 13, verse 3. Jesus said, Unless you repent, you will perish. You've got two choices. Repent or perish. Repent or perish. Choice number one is repent. Choice number two is perish. Your choice. Your choice. Have you repented of all your sin? Jesus said, go and sin no more. You know, you can be set free from all sin so that you don't have to sin anymore through Jesus. Have you done that? Have you been set free? Jesus said, you must be born again. 
Have you been born again? Or are you still living the same old life you've always lived? Doing the same old things you've always done, living in sin, living for yourself? Have you been born again? That's the question. Or are you living in sin? Two choices. There's two choices. Oh, but it's death in the end. It's, yeah, it's, no, it's hell. It's hell in the end. Hell fire, fire, flames, ouch. Flames, burning flames in hell for people who don't stop their sin and follow Christ. That's true. That's true. You know, Jesus made up the word hell fire. Hell fire. Hell is bad. You know, the rich man cried out in hell and he said, I'm in torment in this flame. He wanted just a drop of water. Just one drop of water on his tongue. That's what the rich man in hell wanted. Hell is not a good place. You know, the rich man called hell torment. Torment. And the Bible says that after Judgment Day, the smoke of sinners' torment will go up forever and ever and ever. They will have no rest, day or night. So what about you? Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life or are you a sinner? The Bible says that on Judgment Day, the books will be open. And anyone's name not found written in the Book of Life will be cast into the lake of fire. Now people will be judged according to the things which are written in the books, according to their deeds, according to their works. What about you? What about you? What kind of life are you living? Are you living in sin today? No, you're not good. Keep it up. Live holy. Live holy. Live for Jesus. Jesus Christ died to set you free so that you wouldn't sin anymore. I want, I want people to make sure they understand this. When the Bible says Jesus saves people from sin, He saves them completely so that they wouldn't sin anymore. Why would I do that? Because it, it leads to hell. Fire. Hell fire. You know, sin leads to hell. But if you make the right decisions, if you live the right kind of life, it leads to life, the Bible says. How are you living today? Are you living in sin today? All right, keep it up then. Keep it up. So yeah, it's important that we, we need to repent, turn from our sin, stop our sin, give up all our sin. That's the only way, you know. Give up the drugs, give up the drunkenness. Give up, give up all the sin, drunkenness, and no, give up Slayer, give up Slayer, give up all sin, stop sinning. That's the message. Stop sinning. Stop listening to ungodly music. Stop uh, worshiping Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat. Uh, stop listening to ungodly music and uh, watching ungodly movies, sinful movies. Stop it. Stop your sin. Follow Jesus. You know, the Bible says that false teachers have eyes full of adultery and cannot cease from sin. But true prophets have ceased from sin. Have you stopped your sin? Have you turned from sin today? Unless you turn from sin, you will perish. You will die and go to hell on Judgment Day. The Bible says, 
God wishes for no one to perish, but that all would come to repentance. You know, have you repented of your sin? Like the Bible says. Amen. You know, people need to repent. You need to repent of that. Repent of that. You know. I think we're in the last days. I think we're close to the end. The Bible says that during the last days, men will be lo lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Do you deny the power of God to set you free from the power of sin? Do you think that God is not strong enough to release you from drug addiction? Do you think that God is not powerful enough to release you from porn addiction? Do you think that God is not powerful enough to clean up your filthy language and your love of money? Do you think that God is not powerful enough to uh, clean up your life of filth? God is powerful enough. God can set you free from any sin, no matter what it is. No matter what it is, God can set you free from it. But you have to stop it. You have to give it up. You have to stop all sin in order to be forgiven. All sin. That's what repent means. To give up your sin. Jesus said, unless you repent, you will perish. John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness. Repent and bear fruit in keeping with repentance. The Apostle Paul said, repent and do works. Meet for repentance. Repent, St. Charles. Turn from your sin. Quit all your sin. Get on the floor. Get in your closet. Cry out to Jesus to set you free. You need to resist temptation. You need to turn from all sin. The Bible says that no temptation has overtaken you except which is common. But God is faithful and will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. But with the temptation will provide a way of escape. So if you're tempted to look at porn, you're tempted to get drunk, you're tempted to watch filthy movies, say no. I trust in God. I trust in God. I trust in Jesus. That's what you need. That's how you'll live. To put to death the sin in your life. To die with Jesus. Die on the cross with Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross, He killed the power of sin. He defeated the power of sin on the cross. And then He rose from the dead. And if you die with Christ, the power of sin could be broken in your life. And you can be resurrected, a brand new person. That's the gospel. You can die with Christ and live in a new way. But do you have faith? Do you have faith that Jesus killed sin? Do you believe that Jesus defeated the devil on the cross? If so, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more, Jesus said. Have you done that? Have you put to death the sin in your life? Have you gone and sinned no more? Have you been set free from sin? The whole point of Jesus Christ is to save you from your sin so that you would not do it any longer.